Conversations with Candidates brought to you by Crowing Power in partnership with Lakes Media Collaborative and the Brainerd Lakes Chamber. I'm Lisa Paxton and it's my pleasure to welcome Randy Heidman. Randy is a candidate for Brainerd School Board ISD 181. Randy, welcome. Thank you, Lisa. Good to have you here. Let's go ahead with your opening comments. Okay. Uh, I want to thank the Brainerd Lakes Chamber, the Brainerd High School Media Center, Crowing Power for this opportunity to explain why I'm running for elective office. Hi, my name is Randy Heidman, and I am a candidate in the 2012 Brainerd School Board election. I want to thank all former school board members, most recently Mr. Jim Hunt and Mr. Kent Montgomery for their past service. I also want to congratulate the other candidates who have entered the school board race. I want them to know I am running for school board and not against any of them. I was born and raised in southern Minnesota, graduated from Gaylord High School with a post-secondary degree from Mankato State University. I moved to Brainerd in 1977 and began a career in the retirement plan industry with Universal Pensions Incorporated, and I am still working as a retirement plan consultant 35 years later. I have two sons, Zachary and Taylor, who are both proud graduates of Brainerd High School, as well as my wife, Lorna, of 26 years. I am grateful for the excellent education they received at BHS. I believe education is a major factor in a person reaching whatever their goals are in life. Teachers play a critical role in providing this foundation, as well as students' parents. This is a three-legged stool, and each leg needs to stay firmly planted. Self-motivated teachers and students is a very powerful force, and both parties need to bring that to the table. If this is absent, we need to find out why and what internal changes need to be made. I promise to be fiscally responsible, to ask questions, to keep an open mind on issues, to listen to others' opinions, to use common sense before making a decision, and to change course of action if warranted. I am not afraid of, afraid of change. That's what we have always, that's uh, the way we've always done it isn't a good enough answer anymore. And the Brainerd School District has had to do that since the 2007 levy was voted down. I am comfortable with change as well. I am asking for your vote. Please vote Randy Heidman, 2012 School Board, Brainerd High School. Thanks, Randy. Let's roll into some questions. Let's talk about priorities. What would you consider to be your top priority if elected? Budgets. Uh, the, uh, the funding is, is a very critical uh, issue. Uh, the state, of course, uh, they have uh, uh, pulled some of the funding uh, to balance their budgets. Uh, I think the formulas for uh, providing uh, education uh, uh, finance also needs to be addressed. And of course, those are things that the school board really doesn't have total control over. We have to work with our state legislators. And I know we have some good ones, and I, I know they've been working at it, but we need to continue pushing. I also think that it's important to maybe look at some non-traditional avenues of revenue. Uh, why, not, why not allow uh, private industry to advertise within the confines of the school? Uh, some people might say, you know, we don't want to promote any one product. Well, I don't think we're promoting product. Uh, what we're doing is we're, we're trying to raise some revenue. And also, I think we could use it as a teaching moment uh, maybe in some of the classes in, in, in the school, uh, questions can be asked, what is the purpose of that ad? What, who, who are they trying to reach? Is it a good ad? Uh, uh, et cetera. So some of those non-traditional uh, could also help as well. But I, I believe the number one issue, of course, is funding. Uh, it's something that we need to need to address and, and stay up on top of and uh, okay. keep working with our legislators. Sure. Okay. And you touched on some creative ways to try to increase revenue. When you think of the budget, are there any particulars that are your very specific priorities in terms of we have to make sure we're funding this? Well, the state mandates, you know, certain uh, things as far as class size. Uh, you know, we've got to follow those. Uh, extracurricular activities, uh, I think, are very important. Uh, somehow we got to keep those funded. Uh, obviously, we need to keep funding for 
the, the, the uh, 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 classes that these kids are going to need in order to, to graduate. Uh, I think that, that that's an obvious one, but uh, extracurricular activities I think are very important as well. Uh, and uh, uh, other than that, uh, I don't really have full knowledge of, of the budget uh, and, and some of the priorities, uh, but uh, I'm a quick learner. Okay, all right. Let's uh, touch on that. What distinguishes you from the other candidates? Give me three quick things that would, would set you apart. Uh, first of all, I've worked in private industry all my life. Uh, the second thing is uh, I have uh, worked in, in the, the industry that I've worked in with retirement plans. I've been a trainer for about 30 years of that of dealing with uh, uh, adults. Now obviously that type of teaching is a little bit different. Uh, uh, those people are there because they want to be or because their boss told them they had to come <laughs> to a training session. And uh, I think the other thing is is that we have been forced in the private industry to change the way we teach to adults. Uh, we, we've, we, we've, we use a lot of technology uh, we're uh, potentially going to be doing some live streaming this year uh, through, our, through our corporation. So I think uh, the ability to adapt and to, to move forward, I think, uh, also sets me apart. Okay. Let's talk about students as they prepare for that future workforce in private industry, other areas. What do you think is the school's role in preparing students to enter the workforce? How are you going to ensure they're prepared? Well, not, every, not everyone uh, needs to go to college. Uh, obviously those th 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 that, that want to are going to, but uh, there are some kids I think that get the thought process that they think that they have to go to college. Uh, I just saw an article, uh, I believe it was in either last Thursday's or last Friday's dispatch about a new relationship with a new government agency as far as w employers. Uh, what are their needs? Uh, and I think that's that's very critical because some of the kids uh, may not know what they want to do, but if, if we can collaborate with the private industry, uh, find out what their needs are, explain that to kids, I think, uh, I think that goes a long way. Uh, a few months ago I was on uh, the internet and there was an individual who has a manufacturing plant out in Pennsylvania and all he requires is one year of tech training. People start off at $30,000 a year, and if those kids stay with him for five years, he will pay them $50,000. And if they stay 10 years, on average, those employees are making $100,000 a year. So I think it's staying connected with those employers. And, and uh, again, that article in the paper was mm -hmm. just another indication that Brainerd is doing that, and we need to continue reaching out to the community. Mm -hmm. If we have a vibrant, healthy school, people are going to move here, business hopefully will locate, and hopefully we can retain local business if we have that, that type of a school. And of course, we also have to be fiscally sound uh, as well. So, you know, uh, unfortunately, taxes always come into play. Okay, we are out of time. We covered a lot of ground in the nine minutes we were together. Thank you for joining us for Candid Conversations with Candidates, and remember to vote November 6th.